Hey, 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 it's W5HRO. Well, hello everybody. It's been a while, hasn't it? Last time I uploaded a video was on my uh, RF deck on my homebrew transmitter, and I apologize, I still haven't gotten to that project yet. I, as soon as I uploaded that video, within a few days, we took a long drive to Oklahoma to see my mom and dad, and we were there for a long time. We came back, and then I wound up rebuilding the fence in the back of our property and I've, I've I've had a lot of work I've been doing outside this summer ever since we came back so I'm I'm waiting for the heat to go away and cool off so I can start thinking about radio again if anybody noticed I uploaded a uh, uh, debunking the static D104 microphone myth article on my w5hro.com uh, website just go to the articles tab, or if you just go to the page on the main site, you'll see the uh, little notice there, and you click on I've got like a little notice there at the top. You can click on that, too, and get to it. But uh, I've been working on my, uh, doing some testing on the D104 elements, the D104 crystal element heads. I have several of these D104s, and I'm, I decided I wanted to do some experiments. I did similar experiments back in the 1980s, but I didn't have a nice test box. I built this test box so I could go through and change all the loads and do everything. And if you see what I have here, is I have a switch, which throws resistors in parallel with the mic. And uh, send with the output, to the scope so if anybody knows anything about scope probes when you're on the time times 10 position on the scope with it hooked up to the scope you have a 10 meg load because you have a 9 meg resistor in series and then there's one meg across the scope for the divider and you get it's a 10 meg 10 meg probe so right there is just the probe itself when i'm on this position i'm seeing 10 meg see that and I also added this switch here to look what this does. I can bump it up to 20 meg, which makes it a, a times 20 probe. The only problem is I can't use this scope with that. I can, but I'm going to figure out how to calculate it because this scope has a times 10 and a times 100 position. So I'm going to have to dig out my old BNK. Uh, well, it's on top of my transmitter I use for the audio monitor. I'll have to use that scope to do the 20 meg test. And I'll show you why I'm going to do that here in a minute. So let me put it back. And uh, see, it's a 10 meg load. Now, if I go the first position on this switch, I mean, after the this main position, it bumps it down to 5k, and that's what a static always that's what they always recommended, you know, for uh, the D104 was the 5 meg load. If you go to my web, that article I just wrote and uploaded, you'll you'll see the reasoning for that. But there, are these things, these these heads are actually 10 meg. So if I go here, the next position. There's a one meg load. See, it's coming up, you know, it's close enough for government work. 0.915, didn't have to be exact, close enough, doesn't really matter. Next position is 5K, you know, 4.9, whatever K, you know, 5K, same thing, close enough. And that's going to be when I test the D104s with the uh, built-in two transistor amplifier, because I want to see if I can do some modifications to one of those to get the response a whole lot better. And just, just, I just want to experiment and play with it. And if I go this last position, it's 0.6K, which is, you know, 600 ohms, right? That's a 600 ohm position. So that's going to be when I test my uh, D104 that has the buffer, FET buffer in the base of it. I want to do some tests, run some you know, experiments on it too. So that's basically it. And what I've done is I just threw a bunch of mic jacks on here. I put an 8-pin mic jack so I can test that mic with the buffer circuit. I threw a full old 4-pin CB jack because I got a couple of the amplified mics. I think one of them has a 4-pin plug, and I wired it up, I think, for like the Cobras or something. I'll just wire it up for one of those. It, it makes it easy because I have plenty of these old 4-pin plugs. I can add them on mics. And then I also added... You know, these uh, terminal strips or these push terminals, like speaker terminals. It's because I have a few mics that have just the wires. And I can just stick the wires in here and test them that way. And then I have the quarter-inch photo plug, of course, which is the main one that I prefer to use on most of my stuff. So that's how I'm doing it. And uh, I don't need these resistors here anymore. I was just using those just so I could have something to clip the... Uh, the, uh, the alligator clips from my, to my, from my meter to. So let me plug this thing in. I'll show you what it does. This is kind of hard. Like, give me a second because I really have to push on this to get it to go in. It's a brand new jack. Now I want you to see something. You're going to be blown away by this. Now this is going to get kind of loud. This is a headphone, an earpiece off a pair of headphones. I got on Amazon. I found the cheap pair. It was like $19 for the cheapest pair of 32 ohm headphones I could find. 
And I, I, of course, I had to break it off because the metal bar went down, you know, because it goes around your head. And I couldn't, you know, I could put this part of the housing back on, but I couldn't put the whole thing. And I wired a heavier cord around. I ran, I just did some hot glue around it, you know, just to seal everything so it won't come undone. But I need to get like a cover over this. So it's going to be kind of loud when I'm turning this thing up. And it's probably going to put my phone into full audio limiting, but we'll see what happens. So watch this. Look at that, 4.22 peak to peak volts. That's what these newer heads do is like four volts. And then look at the frequency, which is gonna be right, right there when it comes up. Right at three kilohertz. And I played, I, I played around with the frequency and I went back and forth, and sure enough, this thing, this this is one of those new heads. This is one that came off a TUG9 stand. I found this mic just recently. This is one of the last D104 elements they made before they went out of production. So I grabbed it for that reason, so I could run my test. Plus, you can always I can always use extra heads. I want to get as many as I can because I couldn't live and do ham radio without a D104. There's no way. It's my microphone of choice. It always has been. It always will be. So. Uh, they do four over, you know, four volts peak to peak, no lie. So that's with a 10 meg load. And uh, it'll drop down just slightly when I go to the five meg position. I already tried it. But I, I had something on that article and I actually removed that paragraph because I, I was saying, well, these people don't realize how hot these microphones are. And what happened is I got to thinking about because I looked at one of the D104 spec sheets and I went, wait a minute, let me go check something. And I went downstairs, I grabbed one of my other mics, one of my older D104s, and I just, you know, I, I found one, I took this exact quarter inch jack that I mounted here in this box, and I clipped, I clipped the scope probe to it, and I started whistling. I was barely getting one volt peak to peak, and I went, well, maybe I, maybe I was wrong. With the 5 meg load, it went down to like 800 millivolts. So I thought, well, maybe I just remembered it wrong all these years because I've been telling people these things were hot, right? That the newer, the newest ones were like around four volts peak to peak and the really old ones, you could get eight volts peak to peak. That's what I thought I remembered. It looks like I was probably right. And I, you know, so I went back and I removed part of that paragraph. I thought, well, let me double check stuff before I put something on there that might be wrong. So anyway, uh, but that's kind of what I found out. But what I realized is that the thing is, and I, and I went ahead and I, and I verified that today. I whistled into this microphone here that I'm testing, this head, this one particular head. And when I whistled, I was looking at this scope, my whistle was just under a kilohertz. So if I decrease the generator down, you know, to a kilohertz, well, of course, the, the level goes way down. It goes down to like a volt peak to peak. So that was why. It's just my whistle, I can't get to the, the peak place them on the on these elements i just can't do it i can't get the three kcs there's just no way with my voice you can hear my voice is so deep and bassy my whistle's the same way my whistle at the highest pitch i can get sometimes i can get right at a kilohertz if i try to get it as high pitched as i can but i can't make it loud enough that i have to kind of lower the tone of my whistle to get it loud enough and then it's well below a kilohertz so that was the reason why so i i looks like i was right originally about the, the these things putting out really high voltages and people don't realize that so anyway that's kind of the thing but looks like these old these newer ones do like the round four volts peak to peak and that's what i thought i remembered and the old ones do like eight volts peak to peak so uh, the old 20 meg elements and uh, you'll see where i said you know that like i said the static recommended a five meg a five meg load on this micro on these microphones but there was there there were reasons for it if you read through my article i kind of explained that these things that these newer ones were you know from about the 19 50s to the till they stopped making these things these things remained about 10 meg for the impedance believe it or not so uh anyway that's the story on that but uh the reason i did this 20 meg is because i want to show you something this 20 meg position on this box you're not going to believe this look what i've got look what i've got
<laughs> Look at this thing. It still has the original original cord with the original phono plug out of the box when this thing was made back in the 1930s. This is, I kid you not, this is an original Astatic Microphone Laboratory Incorporated from Youngstown, Ohio. This is the one of the very first, this was the very first model they ever made. This is it. It has the thick plates on it too. So uh, this is the one. And uh, I took some, what I, what I love doing is, I like using the Armor All wipes on old cords like this because it makes them shiny and it makes them soft again and it kind of lubricates them. You know, and it gets them, it, it makes the rubber soft again so it doesn't deteriorate. But this one's all original and guess what? The element still works. This is a 1930s microphone and it still works. So that's why I had to add that 20 meg position on this box. So I could test that head out. I'm gonna check the, I'm gonna, you know, check out the frequency response. But I can't do it on this scope because I need to use the. This is gonna be times 20. I can put this scope probe on my uh, other, my old analog scope, and I'll just calculate. You know, I'll just go times 10, whatever the volts per division is, and I'll figure out what it is. I'll just do it that way. But I've already checked it here on the 10 meg load, and it does peak it right at 3 kcs. So the darn thing still works, believe it or not. That's an original mic. That's the very first D104. I can't believe I found that puppy. So it's nice to have just for the just for the you know just having that that the casing with the tag would be good enough just for the nostalgia aspect of it. But the darn thing still works. So I'm going to have to find the old ring and spring stand so I can use it once in a while just for the heck of it. So that's what I kind of been doing here. And uh, like I said, I've got the different load positions so I can check my buffer and the, the base of my other one that I took the amplifier out of and made for my for my TS590SG. That works beautiful. I want to check the response on that and everything. And then I got some other mics I want to check. I have several D104 heads. I have a couple from the 40s. One from the 50s, you know, and I've got one from probably the 60s and 70s, and I now I've got this new one. So I have several of these D104 heads. And oh, and I found I found this uh, F11 riser, you know, adapter on eBay, and it was still brand new, never used. Even the end of the cable had never been wired up. It still had the original tin wires out of the packaging. So I just put one of these plugs on it so I can, you know, I'm using this so I can test all my heads. That makes it easy. I can use the same stand. So I'll, uh, I'm going to probably upload this video here, and I'm going to uh, probably add it to my website with some more detail after I run some more tests, you know, about the, uh, the, the these things being hot with the peak-to-peak -peak voltages and so forth. So that's all I have for now, and I, I know it's been a while, and I will eventually get back on my homebrew transmitter project. I promise. I just uh, I got sidetracked with this because I've been working outside. It's been super hot. It's been like a hundred some degrees every day, and it's it's just starting to cool off a little bit. And I'm kind of waiting for like fall before I really start working on this stuff again. I just I could thought well I could at least do this for now and test all my mics just for something to do, and then as soon as it cools off, I'm going to bring that RF deck in here and I'm going to uh, start to retrofitting that uh, vacuum cap in there that I found for it and do the modifications I was planning. So that's all for now. 73s. This is W5HRO.